All right, uh, now we begin this morning conversation. Make sure that you give us your, your, your comments. We shall sample them even as you continue uh, uh, with, this, uh, uh, evening, with this evening conversation right here on Y25. For now, Karibu uh, Nisana, you've given Kenyans your stand uh, tonight. But now, let me first of all start with, by dispensing the issue of the CJ and his advisory to the president. In your take, let me start with you, Dan. Is the president bound by the CJS advisory? Yeah, um, constitutionally, um, if you look at uh, Article 261, uh, the constitutional is elaborate in, you know, in its both form and context. It states very well, if you look at through that, that in, on an ad advisory, if the parliament fails to enact any law within a specified period of time, then the chief justice would issue an advisory to the president, mm -hmm. and the president is bound to act on the advisory because that is the constitution of the land. And therefore, I would objectively, uh, you know, um, clarify that you know we are bound to the supreme document of this nation and that is the constitution of Kenya so whether that now the president enact or not purely relies on uh, you know on a number of factors that would really be interesting to see as the day falls or as the week falls that would compel the head of state uh, in consultation with other actions you know to enact an action lastly on that matter our constitutional envisage the separation of powers in that the parliament or the, you know, um, the legislature, the judiciary and the executive are both, you know, uh, in consultation with each other, but they are supremely independent in a manner that they act because they are three arms of the government. And therefore, any advisory that is taken from the judiciary in line with the interpretation of the constitution, therefore bequeath any you know head of executive or, uh, the, or, the, or the two speakers at the you know at the legislature to enact that constitutionally. But, but now looking at what the CJ had said, there are many uh, legal experts who have come in to say that he must act on it. Do you believe so that he is bound by the CJ's adv advisory and he must act on it? If he does, then it will imply something else legally um, Ram, I think we have to look at it from very many angles um, when you look at the interpretation of the Constitution and article 261 the word is shall shall and when you look at the interpretation of many scholars some say shall may be used interchange interchangeably with will which means it's at your own peril and some religious scholars will say that you, sh you shall not murder which mm. means you, you should totally not murder. But if you murder, what are the repercussions of you murdering? So for me, uh, the angle I'm looking at it, I think it's, um, first of all, the ju as much as it's in the constitution, the judiciary going straight ahead to ask the executive to dissolve parliament. Where is parliament in this? The as Dan has mentioned, legislature. sorry, yeah, legislature. Mm. As mm. Dan has mentioned, there are three arms of power working separately, and the purpose of the legislature is representation, uh, oversight. When you look at those functions, they cannot surely be uh, be removed, uh, cannot be only be dissolved, sorry, for because of only one thing. Mm -hmm. They are, they also have a role of representation, which is a big deal. Um, secondly, if you look at uh, the reality of things and the nature of the way uh, life works, if we actually dissolve parliament in 60 days and, and we ask our legis legislatures to seek a fresh mandate, what exactly does it mean? What if we seek a fresh mandate and we still get the same and equal terms? What mm -hmm. exactly will that mean? Will dissolving parliament really remedy the issue of the two-thirds gender rule? No, it will not, which means the two-thirds gender rule can only be sorted in a matter of legislation. If you want the legislatures to go, who will sort it out? If you, if you, you are demanding for a fresh mandate, which is elections, currently the IEBC is improperly constituted. IEBC itself uh, does not have, the commissioners are not um, 
uh, two th two-thirds gender rule sensitive. We know the likes of Kina Koninkada who left a long time ago. So who e exactly is running the show? We are currently at a very critical stage in this country. We are still managing uh, COVID and we've been uh, a bit successful so far in what we are doing. We still have the issue of BBI and quote-unquote a looming referendum. So to bring, uh, to bring this uh, thing uh, right now, for me, I believe it's a big uh, thorn in the flesh. I believe that uh, the, the president just like he ignored the um, order to take the 42 or 41 judges. Mm -hmm. is the same way he should still ignore. Maraga has four, four months to go. Let him go. So the president can ignore that. I believe and, he should. And, and there is nothing legally that binds him. Um, there I, is I, a I, loophole. In your opinion. Yes, but there is a sort of loophole because uh, this is between the judiciary and the executive regarding the legisl okay. legislature. So the, legis the parliament has already gone to court uh, asking for a stay. Now, do you still believe, do you stand with her that uh, no, the no, president no, should no, ignore? No, no, on, a, on a contrary of the... Um, <laughs> Like, like Anita really began by mentioning that, you know, for us to have been here, there's a number of attempts, failed attempts, you know, at the floor of the National Assembly mm -hmm. on matters of two-thirds gender. And all of these took a precedence because, you know, there was a number of advisory that was made. This is not the, the, the first and the last. The issue went through the High Court. The issue has gone through the Supreme Court, sorry, the Court of Appeal. Mm -hmm. Now it's landed in the Supreme Court. There is something in law that is called precedence, that wherever you set a precedence on any issue that is not enacted upon, mm -hmm. in a number of times, the probability is that that be will be repeated again, and mm -hmm. that will set a pace mm -hmm. of people acting on the same in default, or they will, you know, assume. The issue here is that the National Assembly which is a branch of the legislature, has been given several attempts to make sure that the two-thirds gender you know, issue is well taken into consideration. But Ram, something that is so interesting, that you see, while we try to you know, ignore the proxy that was taking place in the National Assembly, you could realize that it was so deliberate. How many times have we had lack of quorum? in the National Assembly when the issue was introduced. Several times, not once, not twice. But there's, there's a there is a number the of times of timing the that, uh, former she has majority been. leader had actually had to appeal to the members of the National Assembly to pass the laws. Or rather, that would render and put the National Assembly at a very precarious position. His plea by that time was not taken into consideration of. And therefore, my admission on my submission is that well, other scholars would really want to see this view in a political angle, that it is up to the president to make sure that the political goodwill is shown so that this, you know, the advisory is ignored. Mm -hmm. I am looking at it in a manner that illegality, the legitimacy of the parliament, should we ignore the advisory? Remember, we really need, you know, 21 days for us to discover that if we ignore the, the advisory by, given by the chief justice, any other bill, any other law that will pass by the National Assembly will be redundant. It so, will be so, rendered so, unconstitutional. So, the, the, the so that is no what choice. I am saying in this stand. That if we take this precedence mm. and ignore and say, you know what? We are dissolving the National Assembly. How are we sure that this, if we ignore this, that we'll, we'll set it? How are we sure <laughs> that if we have the next uh, parliament, this will be sorted out? My issue is not that one. My issue is the messages that we are sending to any other person outside there that this is okay to ignore. Even, even to the and global uh, perspective. And, and, and I, I'm coming me. to you, Anita. Mm -hmm. I'm coming to you, Anita, because you're saying that uh, it's, it's, uh, the timing is quite interesting because my, uh, the CJ is, uh, uh, his time is almost up. Mm -hmm. uh, let me quote the LSK president, Nelson Harvey. He said this, that, and I quote, if the president ignores the CJ's advice, there are two consequences. One, the effective today any laws passed by the National Assembly and the Senate are of no effect. Mm -hmm. And any oversight role that is ordinarily undertaken by Parliament towards vetting of state appointees towards giving reports on state agencies will be of no effect. Mm -hmm. he, say, he went on and said that Treasury must hence uh, afford cease remitting salaries 
and all, all and all other allowances to the, the members of parliament mm -hmm. yet you still say that we need to ignore this what do you think about yes. this comment uh, by the uh, lsk president when, when, I, when i when i hear what have is talking about he's given us two roles of the legislature uh, of the of the Legislative. national assembly as i said yeah. we have um, oversight which he has mentioned and we also have representation what we forget the number one major reason is representation of the people mm. that's what the national assembly does then we have the other roles uh, oversight and uh, the final one enacting bills but the number one role for starters is representation one out of three are these roles affected by this advisory the, the, the two the only two that is mentioned are the ones that are affected but look at it ram mm. if we if we go by what harvey is saying and what uh, cj maraga is saying and we dissolve parliament as uh, the president has been advised we are supposed to hold a, a general election i've said which body which organ is supposed to be in charge of uh, taking care of the elections it's the iebc how will the iebc pa yet before uh, one year or uh, one and a half years towards any general election usually parliament passes bills, b bills in relation to iebc currently iebc is improperly constituted in terms of commissioners so which body exactly are we looking at for me i'm looking it, it to be really honest it looks like malice whereby we want to tie the executive hands and um, give it some uh, certain uh, finalities which in actual practice cannot actually make sense so from uh, where i'm looking at it uh, for me i think it's safe for the uh, president to ignore and wait uh, maraga has already made his legacy he one he nullified the elections two he's one of the first uh, i guess uh, ch uh, chief justice or presidents of the judiciary to to to, to be in quote in quote rogue as he has been but for me the way i'm looking at it it doesn't make sense um it cannot be a third two because things will not uh, go normally my question is why now why the now? issue of timing because mm -hmm. this thing lapsed I, I, about two three years ago so why today why is today the right time to bring these issues up you should have brought it last year you should have brought it the other day i know um dan has already said that he had tried to bring up the issue but even when you look at the nitty gritties in terms of the implementation ram for us to achieve two-thirds gender rule and uh w when i look at some of the submissions by the uh, uh, pe petitioners and the way forward we mm -hmm. have the 47 women rep mm -hmm. and currently as we stand today we should have added 68 more women and how will we get these 68 more women uh one of the petitioners was suggesting through political parties whereby we come to yet political parties have their way of running the show according to the po uh, political parties act so you're telling us we have to uh take it down to the political parties and tell political parties hey when you front candidates no, no. for this area, it can only be a woman. Now, let's is that really democracy? You, you feel it's not? Yeah. Is that really democracy? Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, 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 Anita interestingly mentioned about the supremacy of, you know, uh, of the people and the power the constitution have. There is a very interesting, you know, article after that that it says that all state offices are bound to protect to uphold and to promote the ideals of the constitution. Um, the head of the executive was sworn in and swore the Bible and, 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 and declared that one of you know, his interesting project was to uphold mm -hmm. and you know, defend the, the constitution. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, um, this would be very, very interesting. It would be very you know, mixed reaction from, 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 from the head of state. Should he really fail? to act on the advisory because that is exactly what is want to act. Now, 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 on the other side, Ram, matters of constitution, matters of the law, becomes matters of the law. So the moment it, you know, the political anger of it creeps in to interfere with the matters of the constitution and constitutionalism, then we are losing our strength and our stand as a nation. I want to tell you that the National Assembly as much as it has the authority, as much as it's vested on the supremacy of the representation of the people, the constitutional is a representation of the people. You know, while we understand, you know, and, and people are asking about the timing, what I am saying is that if we are asking about the timing, the National Assembly had got enough time to enact all these laws. And I'm so wary because two thirds gender rule might not only be the only legislation. 
that they have failed that, to that they have failed to do. If we are beginning to track, there might be other legislation. You, you think so, there might be other so, laws. So if we are failing, if if if, if you, you we are failing, you, you understand? <laughs> if we are failing to enact the advisory, then I'm telling you, any other body, any other person, and the laws allows in the constitution to move in court to challenge any other. So we are going to have a barrage. We are going to have a colossal number of you know petitions, number of actions that. The inaction and the failure to enact two thirds gender rule advisory set a precedence too. Now, referendum, I, I don't think, or any other thing, is not an issue that Kenyans need right now. And I hold that view very strongly. If we have to begin to, uh, to, to debate on any other issue, we are having institutions like IBC, the way I need to mention, yes, yes. that should be felt with commissioners and not any other issue that is going to burden Kenyans. You know, with another thing, we are post-COVID and but trying how, to work down the how, COVID. How, how, how are we feeding them? Yeah? Le, how? Le, le, remember, we value your feedback. Be, make sure that you are part of this conversation uh, from wherever you're watching us from, at Y254 channel. The hashtag is uh, uh, the stand, K-E, at Ramaguko. Now, uh, in regards to this discussion, uh, leaders key political leaders came through to give their voice in it let me pull up a tweet by senator james orengo it's coming up in a bit a tweet by uh, the uh, senator uh it's coming up on your screen there uh is senator james orengo is saying that um cj maragas mm -hmm. let me all right let me l l let me pull it down kid uh, a bit i'm unable to read that all right so senator james Rogo is saying all right found it cj Marag maragas advice to the president to dissolve parliament is momentous mm -hmm. probably the most significant and historic from a constitutional standpoint standpoint how we apply foundational principles and values of the rule of law and constitutionalism is now the big test Agreed. you agree with that dan Very. And I think I think is 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 from his experience as a senior counsel, mm -hmm. he has acknowledged the failures that as a nation we've had to enact this, and I agree with Orengo because he said that this is very momentous. This moment is a moment where now the you know the holders, the people who purport to promote the constitution, must act so that. They approve to the country that we are a country of const constitutionalism. Not only you know quoting the constitution, but also acting on the, you know the moments of the constitution that requires interpretation, like the one that we are having right uh, now. Uh, Ram, I look at it from yes. I look at it from two standpoints. One, the first part whereby he actually acknowledges that this is a big thing, right, from the uh, judiciary yes. and mm -hmm. but then. He goes ahead. You cannot look at the first part in isolation. He goes ahead and uh, just read the last statement. The last statement where he talks about con constitutionalism. Uh huh. So the, in the last statement, it it will be, be coming up on your screen in a bit. He says that, that is the senator James Orengo. He says in the very last part that um, how we apply foundational principles mm -hmm. and values mm -hmm. of the rule of law and constitutionalism is now the big test exactly so he gives us a caveat he says it's easy it's a big thing in history blah 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 we've uh -huh. acknowledged it but when it comes to practical application of what we have how will it be he also raises question in on his last part so yes we acknowledge it's a big thing maraga will get his legacy three months to go october november december but the last part how exactly what are the procedures under which this thing will be done what are the procedures? Yes. L l let's pull up uh, one one other tweet by uh, Senator Moses Wetangula coming up on your screen. And he says on the tweet that on the basis of the legal doctrine and logic of balance of convenience, CJ Maraga is dead wrong. He has acted by incurium and nobody or authority will act on the same. The resolution, restatement and construction a construct of the gender rule is not just about parliament. I agree. And what is it about? And actually, it's not just about parliament because mm. parliament only gives us the elective part. We have the appoint uh, in terms of appointment. You if agree with what the senator is saying? Yes, I agree with him totally. Just like I agree with the last part uh, that Ore uh, James Orengo has said. Mm. 
this thing about gender, we, it has we, to have yeah. actually called down We, we also note that he is a member of the Senate who is part and parcel of the parliament that we, you know, that has failed to, so to, 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 so to deliver that. So, so, so for me, I but, think... But, but she says... So, so is James so is, uh, Senator James The realization that, you know, we are failing to meet the required standards of the constitution mm. is actually hitting so hard on us as Kenyans and our representatives. Mm. Now, what we are realizing right now is by the fact that we've taken too long to promote political ideals mm. and promote values vis-a-vis -vis promoting constitutionalism. And this is what we are facing. Mm -hmm. We might be seated and talking about, you know, what is really political convenience without thinking what really are we setting for the future generation in terms of protecting the constitution of this country. I have a question. Okay? Have so a for question. me, me for what, what I think is it takes a painstaking process for us to converse about the issue of advisory and not to take it from a political correct point of view. Ram, but, but my question understand. is, we, we, my we question are mixing is po politics with constitutionality. Exactly, and this is what this is the problem but, but, but that the even we are in this set. You know, this is the problem the, the, that we no, are. No, 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 no. Fundamental political question: mm -hmm. Was constitution made for man, or was for, or was man made for the constitution? You tell me. The constitution was made for man. Man is able to interpret <laughs> the constitution <laughs> by itself. You know, you know, you know, no. uh, you know, you know, Ram, Ram, yes, it is interesting. Yeah. Um, the foundation of legal documents and what has even guided us that we have what is called constitution. Remember the rule of Magna Carta. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that was enacted way long by King George in, in, in England by that time. What did it protect people from? It protected people from, you know, what, what, what somebody you say that, you know, the, the, the safeguards of life and property, you know, the realization that man, if left alone, is not able to govern himself or herself unless there is a guiding principle that sets the norm. This is the problem that we are having in the constitution in this country. For a long time, Kenyans had been yearning for the constitution. We had it. We birthed it in 2010. We cannot crucify. We cannot, you know, uh, dictate when now the constitution is convenience for the political class in this country. I am painstakingly saying that, you know, it has probably found us off guard as a political class. But then, do we really need to throw away the dictates of the constitution because of political relevance or because of political convenience and because of timing? I am really saying no to this because this is setting a wrong precedence in this country. We value your feedback. Keep tweeting. The hashtag is the stand KE at Ramaguko at Y254 channel. Remember, the Parliamentary Service Commission will move uh, to court to challenge the advisory that was made by this Chief Justice David Maraga. What will happen next? Let's take a short break. We'll be back in a bit to answer these questions and much more. Keep it wide.